Let's go to number one in your hymnal. Number one, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Let's all stand together as we sing. My Savior's love. On that first together. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. On that fourth, he took my sins and my sorrow. He made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. When Good singing this morning. Uh, good to see you in church today. Good to be a Buckeye today. And uh, it's been pretty good for quite a while. I think we're spoiled, but uh, great. Hope your heart got a good workout yesterday. And uh, I know most of ours did, but uh, sure is good to be in church today. And a uh, beautiful morning. And I'm sure glad that God loves us. And, uh, and he loves us whether we win a football game or not. Amen. And uh, sure is good to be in church today. Thanks for being out this morning. Let's open with a word of prayer together, shall we? Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity that's ours to gather together here. And Lord, we, we're thankful for the great love you have towards us. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. And Father, I pray that you'll help us this morning to sing to you that everything we do here this morning would be to honor and bring glory to you. Father, bless the singing, bless our fellowship together, honor the preaching of the word of God. May your will be done in each of our lives the best we can. I pray each of us would yield ourselves to you so that you would be able to have your way in each one of our hearts and lives this morning. Make this service exactly what you desire it to be. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
he's coming to take me some glorious day over there to my heavenly in your hymnal 311 redeemed how I love to proclaim it redeemed by the blood of the lamb redeemed through his infinite mercy his child and forever I am 311 on that first together redeemed how I love to proclaim it redeemed by the blood of the lamb redeemed through his infinite mercy his child and forever I am can tell I know that the light of his presence with me does continually dwell I'm redeemed 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 by the blood of the lamb redeemed redeemed his child and forever I am on the last I know I shall see in his beauty the king in his law I delight, who lovingly guarded my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever. Okay, listen carefully. Some announcements now. Our regular schedule today, uh, 5.30, is our Christian growth class. We just started a new cycle last week, and uh, tonight's lesson is going to be on baptism. Uh, baptism is the next step you take after salvation. Uh, baptism is not part of salvation. Baptism is obedience after salvation, and we'll learn about that uh, in the 5.30 class tonight. We meet in the conference room, and uh, everyone's invited, of course, to be there, but particularly if you're a new Christian, uh, you need to get a good foundation laid, and this will help you, and I uh, hope you'll be there for the class at 5.30 tonight. Then 6.30 tonight, we'll be back in the auditorium here for the evening service, and Lord willing, uh, tonight I want to talk to you about on uh, being a four-faced Christian. Okay, anybody know, anybody know somebody who's two-faced? And uh, I'll tell you how to be four-faced, okay? And it's, and it's good, okay? It's in the Bible, all right? And you'll get that this evening when we get together for church, all right? Um, uh, regular schedule then this week with uh, Tuesday night. No, Tuesday night, you're done for the break, aren't you? Man, you guys got it easy. And uh, no school of the Bible till January, I guess, right? Okay. And uh, so you'll pick up then Wednesday night, midweek service. We'll be back on the armor of God uh, Wednesday night. And then, of course, uh, Lord willing, Thursday night at the prison and Friday night with RU. Saturday morning men's breakfast. And uh, if you haven't signed up for that, please do. It's 8 15 uh, Saturday morning. Um, there'll be folks decorating the church at 9 30. I think there's a sign up sheet for that. Uh, ladies, your Christmas party is December the 5th, and uh, your sign-up sheet down there for that as well, I believe. Uh, remember, December 11th at 545 will be the children's Christmas program, and uh, they're working hard on their play, and uh, it's always a delight to watch them 
uh, put on the Christmas program. So that'll be at 545 uh, on December 11th. Then on December 12th is the adult Christmas banquet. Uh, we go out to the Dear Dutchman out in Plain City. We've done that for many years now, and it's always a great night of food and fun and laughter and uh, entertainment. And so we look forward to another great time together there. Uh, you can make your reservation with Carol Coleman uh, after the service. She'll be down in the lobby ready to receive your money for that. All right. And I think that's all I have right now. I'd like to welcome any visitors we have with us this morning. Uh, anybody here today for the very first time? Would you just put your hand up in the air? Any first time guests? I was looking around. I don't think I saw anybody for the first time. That's great. All right, let's hear from the choir. Two hundred forty nine two four nine. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Let's sing that first together. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness away, Jesus my Savior I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shattered this spelling with joy, I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Oh, and at the cross, 
my sins are washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. Born of the Spirit with life from above, into God's family divine. I'm justified fully through Calvary's love. Oh, what a standing is mine. And the transaction so quickly was made when as a sinner I came. Took of the offer of grace he did proffer. He saved me, oh, praise his dear name. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Oh, and at the cross the Savior made my sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. As we sing this last, children, you're dismissed to junior church. Children, you can go on to junior church. Let's sing that last together. Now I've a hope that will surely endure. Now I've a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe. Rich is eternal in blessings supernal from his precious hand I receive. Heaven came down, my soul. The Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. Amen. That's good. Well, let's go to 241, 241, grace greater than our sin, 241, let's all stand together one more time as we sing, marvelous grace of our loving Lord, on that first, marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt, yonder on Calvary's mount Great one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace freely bestowed on all who believe. Did you find your seats? Let's sing that last together. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace freely bestowed on all who believe. You that are longing to see his face. All together now, grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within, grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Say it. Amen. Be seated, if you will. Ushers are coming, and they'll get our offering now this morning. Give as God has blessed and prospered you uh, through another week. I'm going to have Brother Paul Abel lead us in our prayer this morning. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us to here to come to church, and we pray that you'd be as the pastor as he brings the word that we'd pay attention to it and do what you want us to do with. And then we ask that you'd be with those one here today that's not saved, that they'll ask Jesus Christ to come into their heart and save their soul. And we pray that you'd bless this offering that give and that it be blessed. Use it to, to glorify your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please take your Bible this morning for our scripture reading and go to the Old Testament book of Amos, if you would please. Amos is right before Obadiah. I'm sure that's a great help to you. Hosea, Joel, Amos. If you get to Obadiah, come back. Amos chapter 7, if you would please. Amos chapter 7. For the scripture reading this morning, two verses I'd like to read in unison this morning, verses 14 and 15 of Amos chapter 7. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture, all of us standing now to read God's word, and let's begin together on verse 14 of Amos chapter 7. Ready? Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet Neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said unto me, Go, 
prophesy unto my people Israel. Now, Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here this morning. Lord, we want to thank you uh, for the Bible. And Lord, we thank you so much for the freedom we still have in our country to freely gather together and worship you and to open up your word and proclaim it. And Father, we love you this morning and I, I pray that you will prepare our hearts that we'll be ready to receive the truth from your word today. Father, bless us special now to that end. In Jesus' name, amen. In the dark of the midnight have I oft hid my face while the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder precious lord hear my cry keep me safe till the storm passes by till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me safe Till the storm passes by. Many times Satan whispers, There is no need to try, For there's no end of sorrow, There's no hope by and by. But I know thou art with me, And tomorrow I'll rise where the storms Never darken the skies Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever In the sky Hold me fast, let me stand In the hollow of thy hand Keep me safe Till the storm passes by. When the long night has ended and the storms come no more, let me stand in thy presence on that bright peaceful shore. In that land where the tempest never comes, Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by till that storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Amen. That's good. Now, Heavenly Father, we bow before you in prayer this morning. And Lord, I desperately need your help today. And I pray you would help me and strengthen me as I bring the message this morning. Please help the folks as they listen today. I pray, God, that you would minister to hearts this morning as only you can do. We desire your presence in a real way this morning. May the truth of the scripture here today be an encouragement and a help to every individual here this morning. So, Father, give us all ears to hear what the Spirit would say to the church this morning. For it's in Christ's name I ask it. Amen. I do ask for your prayers this morning. I have several infections going on the last few days, and I'm on my fourth day of antibiotic. And I uh, started out in much better voice this morning, and already it's fading fast, so I apologize for the raspiness uh, that it is. And I uh, appreciate you praying for me this morning while I bring the message. Amos was a farm boy. 
Anybody grow up on a farm? Farm boys in here? Somebody still lives on a farm, don't they? Amen. And uh, he was a herdsman. Uh, what he did was he took care of cattle. Uh, that was that was Amos's job, and he was you could call him just an unpolished country boy. And that's what he was saying here in in chapter seven uh, when he said, "I'm I'm not a prophet, and I'm I'm not the son of a prophet. Uh, I was just a a herdman. I was just a guy who watched cattle. And uh, in fact." He said, I was a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And Amos preached to the northern kingdom of Israel. Israel, uh, when you go through the kings sometimes, and uh, Second Kings and some in Samuel, Chronicles for sure, you, you, you never find a good king in, in the northern part of the kingdom. Any good king was always in Judah in the southern part. The, the northern kingdom had none. And that's where God sent Amos to preach against our idolatry, against their sins against God and them leaving God. And uh, Amos was sent with a message. There are some great texts in the book of Amos. The, yeah, you, you, you've heard of the verse, Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. That's in Amos. You've heard that uh, there'll be a famine in the land, not a famine for food or a famine for the thirst for water, but a famine for hearing the words of God. That's Amos saying those words. Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. That's Amos. Can two walk together except they be agreed? That's Amos. Great text in Amos. And I'm not, I'm not using any of those texts this morning. Okay? Though it would be wonderful if we did. But I want to focus this morning on a statement made about Amos in the two verses we read just a few minutes ago. He's a gatherer of sycamore fruit. A sycamore fruit was very similar to a fig, but it's not as sweet as a fig. In fact, it didn't ripen as easily. In fact, they believed that it wouldn't ripen fully by itself. And so what they would do, those who gathered the sycamore fruit, they would take the fruit while it's still on the tree and they had an iron comb that they would use and they would, they would hit the fruit literally beat on that fruit to bruise it. Then they would let it go for a while. And then when they picked it and ate it, it would become sweet. And it would be good to eat. So they didn't believe it would ripen until it was bruised. And once it was bruised, it would ripen and become sweet to the taste and easy to eat. Now I want you to think about that. As I thought about that, I thought, you know, a lot of Christians are just that way. Bitter. If we're unbruised, we can be pretty bitter and harsh. But once we're bruised, we can become very sweet. You may think of people right now, I hope you're not thinking of yourself, but if, it's, if the shoe fits, you better wear it. Hard, tough, bitter, difficult for other people to enjoy. Difficult for other people to be around. And when that happens, the Lord says, I think I'll have to bruise them. I think I'll have to put the iron comb upon them a little bit because I need to turn that bitterness and that harshness into sweetness so that they can be a blessing to other people. God uses heartaches, burdens, trials, disease, Tragedy. And these are all things that God will use to bruise us, to soften us, to sweeten us. And I'm going to give you just three statements this morning that I hope will be something that will be a help and encouragement to you. Number one is this. God is bruising us to make us sweet. God is bruising us to make us sweet. Uh, you know, I, I wrote this down as I was uh, considering this message that I, I wrote down, we often get proud. And then I thought about that statement and I thought what I probably really ought to write down is we very seldom get humble. That's probably more accurate. But we don't, don't ever think, well, I just struggle with pride. You know what? Everyone struggles with pride. And the world is all about pride. And especially it seems like when you're young, 
you, you get a proud and a, almost a cockiness about you because you feel like you're invincible. You feel like you can do anything. And I know even, even young in the ministry, if, if things would get rough or things would get hard, you know what? You just kind of got determined and rolled your sleeves up and said, I'm just going to work harder. Because you had the energy and the zeal and the youth and you just thought you could do better. And you learn as you get older that it's not what you do, it's what God does. But, you know, an example of this, and I want you to take your Bible and go back to the first book of the Bible. This one will be easier to find for you than Amos. It's the book of Genesis. Genesis 37. Genesis 37. A great example of what I'm talking about here is this man named Joseph. Joseph is just a young boy. In fact, they, they believe he's just a teenager. I, I think probably he might have been around 17 because when you're 17, you know everything. And he's 17, and notice in chapter 37 and verse number 5, And Joseph dreamed a dream and told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. I wonder why they hated him. Notice what it says. He said to them, Here I pray you this dream that I've dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And, and behold, your sheaf stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. In other words, uh, hey, we were binding sheaves in the field, and my sheaf stood upright, and all you guys, you bowed down to me. Well, I'm sure if... if if you had brothers in your family, that really wouldn't be a dream they would be encouraged to hear. Okay? That might be one you want to keep to yourself. Okay? And not share with them. His brethren said unto him, verse 8, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Now that would have been enough, wouldn't it? I'd, I'd have said, okay, any other dreams, I'm not telling these guys it. But it doesn't stop there. Again, he's young, he's pretty brash, he's pretty cocky, okay? Look what happened, verse 9. He dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren. And I read that and I say, Joseph, why would you do that? And he said, Behold, I've dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? He said, Man, what are you talking about, boy? I'm your dad. Think your mother and I are going to bow down and worship you? Man, I tell you what, he, he, he rebuked him. But Joseph, that, that's Joseph. He would wear the coat of many colors as the favored son. Don't you think his brothers enjoyed that? Sure. sure. Let me ask you a question. Do you think Joseph's fruit was sweet to his brothers or pretty bitter? Pretty bitter. Think they enjoyed being around him? Huh, not on your life. They really didn't want anything to do with him. So when they got it together, when he went to check on them and they take him and they were going to throw him in a pit and wait for some wild animal to get him and then their conscience and thought a little better of that and they saw some slave traders coming and so they got him out of the pit and they sold him into slavery. And remember he goes down into Egypt and goes through the Potiphar and the Potiphar's wife deal and ends up in prison and spends three years in prison. What was God doing all that for? You know what God was doing? He was bruising Joseph so he could be sweet. So he could get the bitterness out. He could get the, the harshness and the tartness out. He was bruising him. Now look at Genesis chapter 42, would you please? Genesis 42. His brothers now have come down to Egypt. The famine has come. And of course they have to come to Egypt to get uh, grain and get, get food from Joseph. And he keeps them. And uh, he's, he's telling them, verse 19, let's start there. If ye be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go ye, carry corn for the famine of your houses. 
But bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so, and they said one to another, We're verily guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. Reuben answered, saying, Spake I not unto thee, unto you, saying, Did not do not sin against a child, and you would not hear? In other words, Reuben saying, Ain't my fault, guys. I didn't have any good. Don't put any blame on me. Okay? You always have those people around, don't you? Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. And they knew not, now watch, they knew not that Joseph understood them. For he spake unto them by an interpreter. And he turned himself about from them, and what, church? He wept. And returned to them again, and communed with them, and took from them Simeon, and bound him before their eyes. And of course, he sends them back for them to get a job. But listen, Joseph weeps. You know what Joseph would have done before he was bruised? Hey guys, this is what I dreamed. This is what it was all about, buddy. Coming to pass, isn't it? Look who's bowing down to me. Oh, he's not that way now. Huh? What? How can he weep? He's been bruised, that's why. But wait, let's move on. Look at chapter 43. They come back. When they come back and they bring Benjamin with them, verse 29 of chapter 43 says, He lifted up his eyes and he saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother? of whom ye spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother, and he sought where to weep. And Andrew knew his chamber and wept there. Again, he's weeping as he sees Benjamin. That there was a, I'll tell you, I believe there's a tenderness in Joseph that wasn't there before he went through what he went through. Before God bruised him, that tenderness and that kindness was not there. Now look at chapter 45, verse number 1. Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said to his brethren, I'm Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him. They're troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto them, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I'm Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall be neither earing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me here or hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and lord over all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. And he tells them to go back and get, get, get their father. He's saying, listen, uh, don't, don't you be upset. Did he want any vengeance? No. Was he mad at him? No. He came to realize, hey, all this hardship I went through and all these struggles I went through, the fears I had, even going to prison. Who did that? My brothers? No, God did. God did. God was bruising me. God was preparing to use me. And God couldn't use me until He bruised me. So God, God is bruising us to make us sweet. Joseph's heart is so much tender. Let me give you statement number two this morning. Don't resist when God wants to bruise you. That's our, that's our natural tendency. We, we want to resist the iron comb. We don't like it. You, don't, you know, don't complain when things get tough. Don't don't complain when times are hard. Don't complain when, when the storms come. When those things come upon you, listen, don't, don't get upset and don't complain and don't get discouraged. Hey, rejoice. Why? Say, there's a God in heaven who's preparing to use me. There's a God in heaven who wants to do something with my life. What a joy. 
Why would God allow a church building to burn down and seven people die? Because God was trying to prepare a Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Why would a man lose an eye to cancer? Because he's preparing a Ron Hamilton patch the pirate. Why would a young preacher lose a two-year-old little girl? Because God was preparing to use a Lee Robertson. Why would, why would God have a, 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 a man be born to a drunken father, a town drunk, and, and want nothing to do with God, and be reared by his mother, and yet grow up to be a Jack Hollis? You know why? God was preparing somebody. God has to bruise. Sometimes you look at people and you think, boy, God's really used them in a great way. God's really done great things with their life. You have no idea what bruising process they went through for God to get them and use them the way He's using them. Don't resist when God wants to bruise you. God's looking at you today. He may see your fruit that's a little bit tart. He may see your fruit that's a little bit bitter. And he says, I think i got to bruise you because you need to be made sweet. I see it sometimes, Brother Jarvis, with young preachers, kind of, kind of proud and brash and cocky. And I just think, you know, God will bruise you. God will bruise you so he can use you. You'll go through some tough times. You'll go through some difficulties. And, and by the way, getting bruised doesn't feel so good. We were, we, we, a couple weeks ago, we got a splitter to split some wood. And we rented it from this Broadway rental over here. And we had to get it then from the, from the driveway and roll it into our backyard. And Brother Dave Paxton was helping me and I was pulling on the thing. It's a, you know what I'm talking about? It's a, you know what a log splitter is? Anybody know what that is? A few of you do. And uh, I was pulling on the front of that through our front yard, and we have a kind of a, it, I don't, it's not a sinkhole, but it's a, it's a hole kind of in our front yard. It's kind of where it went down. And, you know, as I'm pulling that thing, one of those tires went down in that bit. And when that went down this way, this thing I'm holding on went, went one way, and then it came back the other way, and, boy, it, bam, it hit my leg right there and knocked me down. And I went flying, and Dave Paxton went laughing. And no, he was, he he wasn't laughing. But uh, you know, and and I got a I got a big bruise right on that. And you know what? That doesn't feel so good. That doesn't feel so good. And it gets tender, doesn't it? You ever have a bruise? How many of you like when you get a bruise? You like to feel that bruise a little bit, and it's tender. Anybody do that? Huh? Yeah, several of you do. The rest of you just aren't normal. Sometimes it seems like the preacher may be picking on you or he's preaching hard at you or telling you hard things. If you think, man, he's just kind of beating up on me. No, the preacher is trying to bruise you a little bit so that you'll become sweet enough for God to use. So you'll become a blessing to other people's lives. If you stay the way you are and you refuse, you resist the bruising, you're bitter and nobody will want to be around you. No one will want to have, you won't have any blessing to your life to others. The Word of God hurts us sometimes. Pricks us sometimes. It's a, it's a, it pierces to the dividing asunder of our soul and our spirit. But God's Word, when we allow it to work in our life, it will only make us to be a blessing to others. It will only make us to be what God wants us to be. Parents, Listen to me, children. Listen to me, teenagers. Parents begin to come down hard on you. You think they're too, too strict and too tough. And there are too many rules and too many regulations. Listen, they're doing that because they're trying to make you to be a blessing to others. They're trying to, 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 to bruise you a little bit so your fruit will be sweet. You'll be more delightful to other people and sweeter for other people to be around. You know, a bruise is an injury to the flesh. That's what a bruise is. And it's always caused by a blow. And so God will bring blows into our life that are blows to our flesh. 
How many times you caught yourself saying, well, that hurt my pride. Good. It needed to be hurt. In fact, it needs to be destroyed. Bruise. Bruises get sensitive. Bruises are tender. You can always tell a Christian that's been bruised because they're sensitive and they're tender to other people. When you've not been bruised, that's their problem. Hey, that's their bed. Make them lay in it. Well, I knew that was going to happen to them if they did that. Too bad. You know what your problem is? You, you haven't been bruised. You're, you, you're, you're an expert at telling everybody else how their kids ought to turn out until one of your kids go wayward. Then it's a different story. See, then you've been bruised. God's bruising us to make us sweet. Don't resist when God bruises you. And then let me give you statement number three, and I think I've said it already, but number three is God bruises so He can use you. I know there's people here this morning with some heavy hearts. I know there's people come in with burdens. Everybody carries a load that other people know nothing about. Everybody comes in and you put on your Sunday best and you smile. And you, somebody asks, how you doing? And you say, great, how are you? But you really don't mean it. I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad not everybody unloads when you say, how you doing? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> We'd all be in trouble, wouldn't we? But you know, you have a heavy heart. You have some burdens. You have some, some trials you're going through. Why don't you sometime today just get along with God and say, God, thank you for the trials. You're bruising me. You're making me sweet. You're helping me. You want, you want to use me to be a blessing to others. Look in the New Testament with me, will you, to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul is, Paul tells, Paul talks here in in the first few verses of chapter 12 about when he he actually got a glimpse of what heaven was like. People, you know, the, the real deal, the only guy I know that went to heaven and saw what it was like and and is and 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 could tell anybody about it is the one you're reading about right here. Okay? There's other people who try to sell books and write books and all that kind of stuff to make money on it. But listen, here's a fellow who really did it. You know why? Because God put it in the Bible. Okay? God, if it was a lie, God didn't put it in the Bible. All right? And so he, he records it here. And Paul said that he would not even talk about it. Paul didn't, Paul didn't advertise his next meeting. Come here, the man who had the heavenly experience. Come here, the man who went to heaven and came back. Let him tell you about it. Uh, didn't, ne- would never talk about it. He said, I'm not going to do it. But he did say this, verse 7. Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations. There was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Just, Just... So I wouldn't get so proud or I wouldn't think I'm so all that because I got to get a vision of heaven. And I got the abundance of the revelations. Hey, he penned, I think, half the New Testament. That's something that he said, just so I don't get lifted up thinking I was something, God sent something in my life to not allow me to get lifted up above measure. And verse 8 said, For this thing... I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. He didn't like it. He said, Lord, Lord, I, I go without this. I, I'll stay humble, I promise. But God said, verse 9, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in what? Weakness. Weakness there is unsound unhealthy state of the body. 
kind of like a bruise caused by a blow to the flesh. Most gladly, therefore, Paul said, would I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Not only that, I'll take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses, in bruises. That's, that's, that's slave audition. For Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Paul said, you know what? I'd rather suffer. I'd rather have some bruises and know that God will use me than to not have any and not be used by God. More than anything else, I want God to use me. What kind of fruit do you have this morning? Proud? Haughty? Bitter? Will you let God bruise you to some sweetness? So He can use you to be a blessing to others? So others can enjoy that sweetness and be blessed? Everybody here this morning, as I talk about that, and I talk about people who you really enjoy being around, you, you think of somebody. You say, you know, I just look forward to spending time with people like that. And I'll guarantee you, if you, if you could talk to them and find out their, their history a little bit and their testimony, you'd find out God bruised them along the way. That's why they're so sweet today. God wanted to use Amos to bruise Israel. So he could use Israel again. And God may use whomever to bruise you. So he can use you again. So he can use you in a greater way. So he can use you to be a blessing and a help to others. Ever think about Jesus goes to Calvary? Before he even goes to Calvary, he's beaten cat of nine tails beaten with the fists of the Roman soldiers and then said to prophesy as he's blindfolded tell us who hit you the, the, the beard ripped out of his face then to the cross where the nails are driven through his hands and his feet he's hung up there to bleed and to die for our sins Isaiah 53, verse 11. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Why would that please God? It pleased the Lord to bruise him because, listen, what sweetness could come out of that sacrifice? What sweetness could come out of that bruising? You know what the sweetness is? That now the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. How sweet is that offer? How sweet is the offer that, that, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hey, that, that's so sweet for us because we, we get to enjoy that wonderful, that sweetness, that greatness of salvation. Why? Because Jesus was willing to be bruised so we could enjoy the benefit. How many people could enjoy the benefits of your life and your relationship with God if you just allow Him to bruise you so you could be a blessing to somebody else? Were it not for Calvary, were it not for the blood, were it not for the death, were it not for the bruising, there'd be no eternal life. There'd be no salvation. There'd be no reason for us to gather together here this morning. There'd be no purpose of us to even be here. We'd be of all men most miserable. If you've never received Christ as your Savior, receive Him as your Savior today. He was bruised for your iniquities. He was bruised for your sins and for mine. Remember, the bruises make you sweet. Don't resist when God wants to bruise you. And remember, He bruises us that He might use us. Don't, don't get upset when you're going through the bruising process. I know it's painful. 
It didn't feel real good when the tongue of that thing lashed over and nailed my thigh. That hurt. But you understand, it's good. It, it helps you. And it'll help you be a blessing to others. Will you let God bruise you? That's Amos. A gatherer of the sycamore fruit who God uses, who God bruises, He uses. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the simple truth now this morning. Thank you for the life of Amos. Thank you, Lord, for his testimony. Lord, what a great book. What a great prophet. And he was just a a cattle herder and a gatherer of the sycamore fruit. And Lord, by that description, you help us understand what you desire in our life. I know you don't want our fruit to be bitter. You'd like our fruit to be sweet. The Bible says we're known by our fruits. And so, Lord, I pray that, I guess, Lord, I'm asking you this morning that you'd encourage people who are maybe in the process of being bruised, that they'll not resist. They'll realize that you're endeavoring to make them sweet. You're endeavoring to use them and allow their fruit to be sweet to others and cause others to want to live for God. And I pray that your perfect work would be done in each of our lives. I pray, Lord, if any in the room have never received Christ as their Savior, they'd realize that he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. That, Lord, we only have peace through the blood of his cross. And I pray they'd come to know Christ as their Savior today. But, Lord, you without a doubt laid this particular message on my heart for today and and I I just believe somebody needed it. And I pray you used it in their life today. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer in just a moment. I wonder how many this morning would say, Preacher, there's a day in my life when I knew that Christ died for me, that he was wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my iniquities. He He died in my place. And there's a day when I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ as my Savior. And Pastor, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt I'm saved and that if I died, I'd go to heaven. Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony. Would you slip it up right now for me and just say, Pastor, I know that I'm saved. No doubt about it. Okay, you may put it down. So if somebody here today would say, Pastor, I'm not sure about that, but I would appreciate you praying for me this morning. Would you slip your hand up and back down and say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm not sure of my salvation. All right. The message was to believers this morning. I wonder if you're here today and say, Preacher, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart. I don't know whether you're going through the bruising process. Maybe you've been wondering why certain things have happened in your life the way they have. Maybe like Joseph. I don't think Joseph knew at the time. I think as he reflected back, he saw what God was doing. And maybe this morning, whether it be, I know God's doing this to sweeten me. I know that I'm not going to resist anymore what God is doing in my life when he wants to bruise me. And I'm going to begin to thank God because I know if he's bruising me, he desires to use me to be a blessing and a sweetness to others. And I want that as well. I wonder how many folks in the room would say, Preacher, God definitely stopped at my seat today and spoke to my heart. Pray for me this morning, Pastor. Would you slip your hand up? Christian? Yes. Amen. Amen. Many hands this morning. God bless you. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. Why don't you bow the knee to the Lord this morning and say, God, I'll take the iron comb, just make my fruit sweet to be a blessing to others. Just just use me. Make me usable for your service and for your glory. 
If you're here today and you're saved and you've never been scripturally baptized, you ought to come and say, Pastor, I need to be baptized. If you're saved and you're scripturally baptized and you believe you ought to belong to Bible Baptist Church, then you come. Christian, you just need to come and pray. Bow your knee to the Lord and say, God, have your way in my life, please. Just use me for your glory. Heavenly Father, bless this invitation time. I thank you for speaking to our hearts this morning. Thank you, God, that you're involved in each of our lives. Thank you so much that you desire to use us. Lord, I pray that each of us would desire that our fruit be sweet, fully ripened. It would be what our lives could be a blessing to other people as we seek to influence others for the kingdom of God. Father, have your way in this invitation now. May every individual do what you're speaking to their heart about this morning. May no one resist you. And I'll thank you for what you'll do this morning. Quietly with our heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist is going to play. She plays by the Bible, sing. God has spoken to your heart this morning. Respond to him, will you please? Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? That's right. No light right. in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. Over us sin no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Sing the chorus together, will you? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your word and for its work in each one of our lives. Now, Father, dismiss us with your care, please. And Lord, help us to leave this place and to be doers of the word and not hearers only. But Lord, we thank you so much for loving us and for being a God that desires to use us for your glory and for your honor. And we simply want to be vessels that you could use. 
And so, Father, give us a good afternoon, and I pray you'll prepare us for what you have for us this evening when we return for the services. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Brother Bob. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join tears with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. Amen. You're dismissed. We'll see you tonight. <laughs>